Hey guys, my name is Jeff. Welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, then welcome back. Today I am making a video for you guys that's very special. What I really like about these Tenba backpacks is that they seem to be like just the right design so that no matter what you put in them when you throw them onto your back and carry them around with you, it's a good fit, it's, it's comfortable. For me at least, they fit very well and they let me bring all the stuff I need onto my location and it, it's actually fun. It's a lot of fun because the way everything's organized and the way that you can get into different compartments to arrange your stuff just kind of fits with the flow of how I work and how I think and how I find stuff. So, you know, one other thing I think special about these is relating to Goldilocks. You know Goldilocks and the Three Bears? So I'll show you what I mean. You know, with Goldilocks and the Three Bears, she, she goes into the Three Bears house and she eats their porridge and they, she sleeps in their beds and sits in their chairs and all that. And you know, she's just looking for the one that fits her just right. So, these Tenba packs, here's what I had as a camera backpack before the Tenba pack. Can you get a look at that? <laughs> this is enormous. This pack is huge. Take a look. That's it. This is a low pro pack. This is a very well padded pack, but it's just so huge that, you know, I'm not gonna bring this with me on photo shoots because by the time this gets loaded up with stuff, way too big, way too much stuff to bring. Although I will say it's so well padded that it can hit the ground and whatever's in it is gonna be very well protected. Now, just for fun, a couple weeks ago, I got this other pack. I got this on Amazon, and it's the other size. Check this out. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, <laughs> and it's a tiny one. Look, very small. But you know, it's kind of cute, and what I like about this is it does what it sets out to do, which is, be a small pack that you can put your things in. If you're not a huge person, if you just want to bring a few things, this actually fits the back pretty well. It's padded and I actually use this little pack to put some of my flash equipment in. Can you see some flash units? Ta-da! I have a bunch of flashes like these and some batteries for the flashes. I have one, two, three, four flash units. Anyways, I like this little case, but this here, not trusting this with my cameras and all my stuff, and it's not big enough to hold it all. So, you know, as they say, without further ado, let's get into the Tenba packs, because that's what you came here for. I'm gonna show you my two backpacks, and I brought these with me to a photo shoot yesterday, and from my car, I brought them into my studio. So I'm just gonna show you the packs, what they look like right now. I have not unpacked them. So you're gonna get to see real world stuff. So the packs are right there in front of us. And I'm just gonna take this and show you exactly what's going on here. So on the left, you'll see the Tenba Fulton V2 uh, 16L and then on the right is the 14L. From here you can see one of them is a larger pack. You can see especially on the top. Here's a good view of the 16L on the left and the 14L on the right. And as you can see the 16L is a taller bag and the 14L is a little bit shorter. So if you were wearing the 16L, and I'll put this on in a little while, it's gonna extend from you know high on your shoulders uh, even head height with the top of that uh, right down to your waist and if you look down here you'll see there's actually a waist strap right here on this pack and on the 14L there's no waist strap it just uh, attaches there but nothing to hold it here onto the waist for scale I've put the 16L on this uh, little desk here it's a small desk, it's probably like two and a half feet wide. You can get an idea of how much space that takes up. And now we'll just swap it 
Now you can see the 14L on the same desk and it just takes up a lot less space, okay? So now you've seen the two bags side by side so you can just get a general idea of what one looks like next to the other. I'm gonna go and show you how much stuff you can fit into each of the two packs. And to keep things simple, I'm just gonna use the same gear and I'm going to load it into one bag and then into the other and you'll see how well it fits and maybe how much extra you could fit into the 16L compared to the 14L. 14L all weather camera backpack, color black. And I've got all of my Sony camera gear in here and then one Canon lens, as you can see. So right in the middle is my main camera right here and that's the telephoto, it's a 70 to 180. And then this is the wide angle zoom lens and that one right there is the 28 to 75. I'm put in a Canon lens just because that's a third lens and you can see how things can fit in this bag. And then right here is this cover this is the weather wrap and it's a really cool cover. I have given a little bit more of an explanation of what it looks like and how it works, but it's silver on one side to keep the heat off this pack bag and it's black on the other. It expands and wraps right around the whole pack. So everything fits right there. And then in the top part of the bag right here, I've put three items and I'm gonna put the same ones in the other backpack just to keep things consistent. But it's a stuffed animal, an otter, and a grapefruit, and then a bottle of Fiji water. So those three things are gonna be consistent in both bags, so for comparison's sake. And then I've put them on top of this desk here, and the desk is about two and a half feet wide, so you can see this doesn't, you know, when we close it up, does not take the whole desk width. And then what I've put over here on the other side are just a few of the essential things that didn't fit very easily in this part of the bag. I'm sure I could, you know, fit some of them in here and like right here, there's a little space and I could put my multi-tool somewhere here, but you can see these don't really fit in here that well. Okay, the multi-tool could fit here. And then this is a remote control right here. So this little remote could fit there. And you know, you could fit things in, but then there's still, for example, a microphone, an extra battery over here. And then this is a remote trigger that fires the camera so I don't have to actually be behind the camera. I can have it on a tripod and use this as a camera release. So those things would not fit in here. And uh, that's okay because there are a lot of other compartments in this bag, those will be easily fit in. But the main point here is just to show you what I can get into the main camera compartment. And that is one camera, one telephoto lens, that's a long lens, one wide telephoto, and then another lens. This could be any kind of, this happens to be a 10 to 22, but really any midsize lens would fit in there. So there you go. And the next video I show you will be of the 16L for the sake of comparison. Hey you guys, so now I'm gonna show you the Tenba Fulton V2 16L all-weather camera backpack, color black. And as you can see, this is on the top of the desk. Like I said, it's about two and a half feet from side to side. This one takes up more space than the 14L that I showed you earlier. And I just wanted to reiterate that in this top compartment here, I've put the same thing that was in the other pack, which is a little stuffed otter toy and a grapefruit and a bottle of water for consistency sake. And then um, I'm just showing you here what this pack looks like out of the bag. You just get your little hang tag here with the description of what the thing is. And then a couple other things that are important to point out here. With this pack, the 16L, you get a waist strap right here, as well as the chest strap or the sternum strap. And these are made out of really high quality uh, buckle materials. Like when you snap, when you click these, it's really quality. You can see they have a nice design there. Um, same here, this is the waist strap. And um, they're made out of really good equipment. Like I, I have a feeling that these here are designed to really last a long time. When they click in there, it's just it's solid. So they, they really, you know, 
as they, it's really funny. This is not sponsored. I bought this myself, but when they say never compromise, I really feel as though Tenba um, is serious about making stuff that's really high quality. And you know, yeah, you might pay more for a bag like this than some of the cheaper stuff you can find, but it's good stuff. So, um, and what you see here, I just have a bunch of dividers. As you'll see inside, I didn't need all of these dividers, but they all come with this pack. So if you have lots of little camera lens, knickknacks, stuff like that, uh, you'll be able to organize it all. So let me just show you here uh, how this all works and what fits inside. I'm just gonna unsnap this one. Okay, so one zip. Now, before I open this up, this is everything that I put into the 14L that I just showed you. It's the same gear. And this is how it looks in the 16L. So you'll remember I put uh, my multi-tool on one side. I think I had it over here, I'm not sure. But, and then this little thing came on the other side and there was just enough space to fit them. So here you could actually fit them there. You have all this space over here. Okay, so this here could hold like a whole other lens and have more space. I have put the, the uh, lens that was attached to the cameras right there. There's the Canon lens and here's my wide angle zoom lens right here. So you have a lot of space over here. You could put things in there and then I think this is... And so when we're talking about the difference between a uh, 14L and a 16L, that's two liters of space. So some of it shows up right here in the camera compartment. And so if I were to you know, help someone make a decision or if you're trying to decide, here's a real good example. If you have a camera and three lenses, these three lenses all fit in the 14L. If you have a second camera body or if you have more than three lenses, then you'd probably need this 16L because you'd need this spot. But if you've got one, two, three lenses, this all fit into the 14L perfectly. And it's real nice, it's a very compact bag. But for my own use, I actually own both of these because for a lot of my uh, photo jobs, I need to bring along a bunch of extra equipment. Oh, hey there, I didn't even know you were there. Um, well, listen, I'm glad you've watched so far and sort of checked out the differences between these two packs and I hope seeing it with your own eyes has been useful to you. Um, but we're not done yet. There are a few things that I wanted to share with you because I've had a few specific questions in the comment section. I want to answer them for you. So I am now wearing the 16L, the slightly larger of the Tenba backpacks. And one thing about this pack is this strap here, this sternum strap or chest strap, it is a little bit larger and more expandable than the strap on the 14L. What I mean by that is it's a pretty large strap right here and it comes with extra. So you can see right here, there's like a lot of play here. If I was a bigger, huge dude like a football player or a linebacker, you'd have all, look at that play, you see that? So if you've got like super broad, wide shoulders, huge chest, whatever, this will fit you and you can cinch it down. The other thing that I can show you here is just that, here is a waist strap, here's a kind of a close-up view. And I have never used this, but you can see it's, it's kind of folded in on itself. But there's the buckle there, and there's the pack. Pretty tall, as you can see. But it's got a nice curvature. The part that fits against your back and all your gear is in here, is like really nice and soft and memory foam. So that's pretty cool. And um, this, you know, even though it's a bigger pack, I really do feel that this bag just does hug you real well. It just stays on you. And I honestly can't tell the difference when I'm wearing them between the 16L and the 14L. So I would just, if I were a bigger, bigger person, I might go with the 16L just because 
there's more of a guarantee it will fit. And definitely, if I had more than one camera or more than three lenses, the 16L would be the obvious easy choice. So I'm just gonna take this off here and show you again. I had mentioned what I had put in the top here, top compartment. otter. The funny thing is that the dog loves this little otter and Rosie has a lot of different dog toys and they're scattered throughout the house. She knows where they are. She knows where she can find them but whenever I'm like at my computer at work or whatever sometimes she'll kind of saunter behind me and I'll see her out of the corner of my eye carrying this across the room. This is not her dog toy. This, <laughs> this is I put it like on a bookshelf or I'll have it just like on some table somewhere because I like this little otter and she will find it and she'll somehow get up there and grab it but she takes really good care of it. You can maybe see the nose looks a little funny. She tends to like licking its nose. I think she takes care of it because she knows it's not a dog toy but, um, but she can't resist it and I mean how could you, right? So anyways, this little otter, um, I always just find it funny that she's able to get it no matter how high I place it or where this otter goes, Rosie's able to find this thing. In this bag, I also, like I had mentioned, there's a grapefruit that I fit in here and a bottle of water. And this here, these all fit in the top, whether it's the 16L or the 14L, this top compartment is amazing. It's just incredible. Look how much stuff. And this does roll down. And then you can cinch it up like this. And then that's all that stuff's in there. It's not going anywhere. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention to you as a caution with these bags, and it's nothing wrong with the bag itself, but what'll happen, and this happened to me, okay? And I'm glad that I, I removed the cameras and lenses from this one here. Is that sometimes you'll have your gear in here. I had a photo shoot and I took a lens off my camera and I put it right here into the back of the camera, all right? Back of the camera bag. And then I remembered that there was something that I needed to get out of this bag. And as you can see, that happened. So this bag has three great compartments. One of them is here. This is the front of the bag. This is where you could put your laptop. Laptop goes right here. I've got an extra memory card right here. So it's got lots of places to put stuff, but if you don't remember when you switch from one compartment to the next to close it and zip it shut. I think it would be really easy in the middle of a photo shoot to just uh, go to open this up and just forget that something's open. So anyways, for what that's worth, I, I literally, I had my 70 to 180 lens fall out of my uh, camera backpack. I was using the 14L bag. It fell out, it hit the floor and I was like, please do not have broken. I, it didn't. For some reason, it like hit the floor just perfectly and it rolled. I looked up how much it cost. That lens was more than $1,000. If that had broken, it would have been a very sad day. So I just say this so that maybe one of you watching this, if you wind up getting this pack and haven't had this happen to you, just remember when you're done using one of the compartments to close it up, zip it closed, whatever, but uh, those things when, when you're distracted and you switch from one to the other, things can fly out. So one thing I just want to let you guys know about is I use checklists. This is my photo checklist and then I have another one for my video equipment and it's just very useful to have one of these. You know, all pilots use checklists before they take off from an airport to make sure that the whole plane works and they have everything they need in good operating order. And I just like to make sure I've got my cameras, my lenses, the batteries are charged, the memory chips are full, or rather the memory chips are not full, but that I have everything that I need. And so I just want you guys to know that this is a really good kind of way to build um, a habit into your 
work, into the, your rhythm of work. And that way you'll always be ready. In wrapping up this video, I just thought I would show you kind of my standard get up, what I really like to use when I go on photo shoots. And this really is the 14L, the Tenba. It fits well, it, sure, it's a little more compact than the 16L, but it holds the cameras that I need. Well, the camera, the one camera, and two or three lenses. And that's all I ever bring with me on most of my shoots. However, I do keep the 16L with me in the car usually, and it's loaded up with all my backup gear. So my new camera this year is the Sony a7 IV. So that's what I bring with me and shoot with. It's what I'm shooting this video on. Um, but because sometimes things break, cameras break, lenses break, cameras run out of batteries or whatever, I just have another system. It's just another camera with memory and with lenses and when things go south in a hurry and you know, you may have a disaster on your hands with your equipment, I can just go to the car, get my other gear out and continue the photo shoot or the video shoot. So. Uh, I'll just show you real briefly. This is my 14L and this is it. It's fully loaded and this is similar to the 16L that I showed you guys earlier and in the top here I had mentioned that both of them I had the bottle of water, the grapefruit, this guy, and then in this particular pack, I have this uh, Monolite. This is just a very powerful flash unit and it's got a battery right here attached to it. And this fits in the top of this small-ish camera backpack, all right? And I just think that's just incredible that I can fit camera lenses and a flash like that. And then in the top, I also have this really nifty little remote control. Can you see it? And this here allows me to take pictures or start or stop the video when I'm not at the camera. It's really helpful because when I'm taking pictures of people, when I'm doing portraits, they're a lot of times like much more comfortable if I'm not with my eye to the eyepiece, to the viewfinder of the camera. So I can kind of stand near the camera or behind the camera and just take their picture by pushing this button and they're much more relaxed when you're just talking to people and uh, not there with your eye glued to the eyepiece on the camera. A couple other things I put on the top. This is the uh, remote trigger for that monolight that's over there. I'm gonna use that tonight for my headshots and an extra battery. I keep that in the camera bag so that I have one like in the camera right now driving it and I have this as a backup. So there you go, I did it. I did this video. I thought, you know what? Someone out there is gonna like this. It's gonna help them. So I hope that person was you and that seeing this comparison uh, was helpful. I actually got a comment this morning and that was the catalyst. Somebody had something very nice to say. They were really supportive. They liked a video I'd made and I thought, oh, that's nice, that's cool. And that gave me, that was the little bit of inspiration I needed today to just finally do this video. So here you have it. I hope it's useful. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and then, you know, YouTube. I'm, and then I'm supposed to say this stuff, you know what I, but anyways, I'm glad that you're watching this. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And I'm very happy you're here. Let me know if there's something you want to see in a future video. You know, like I said, it's really funny. I thought doing videos about investing in stocks and choosing ETFs so that you can build up a nice base, a nice financial cushion so you can be independent as a professional photographer or videographer. I thought, oh, that's what the world needs. Uh, and then I found out that people just want to know about gear. So, and some of you, some of you actually are interested in the investing and I'm very glad, I'm very grateful to those of you who actually are curious and ask questions about investing for the future. Cause I think at least coming from me, it's made my photography life so much more enjoyable and so much more relaxing and just like easy, just nice and easy going knowing that there's something saved so if I don't get a job next week or next month 
that I've put some money away and you know, you can like travel, you can do your thing and life is just good when you don't have to worry about those things. So I'm really glad you spent the time today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.